I was a teenager in the 90s. I'm going to show you how we used to do our hair and how we used to do our makeup. And that won't take very long because we did not wear a lot of makeup back then. I've watched other people make videos about what they wore in the 90s. And there are some slight differences because different countries and different regions had different products that really were in favor. But we all had a few things in common especially lipstick. We will talk about that in a minute. In the meantime, if you could do me a favor and sign up for my completely free newsletter, we have lots of fun over there. I talk about products and things like this. It's helenavery.substack.com. Recently, I wrote an article about how I got fit in my 40s and it was actually pretty easy. So go ahead and check that out. First things first, we got to talk about 90s hair and you would never have a kind of a straight part. You wouldn't do that. Your part would always be kind of messy and going in every direction. And my mom always used to say to me, aren't you going to part your hair? And I'd be like, no, nobody parts their hair. It's supposed to be messy looking like this. So yes, we had a messy part. And one of the ways we liked to wear our hair back then, at least where I lived, was we would use these little clips and uh, we would pin it up here, even smaller actually than these ones. And it did not look that good looking back. It looked like a mess, like a little porcupine on your head. And we would just go about our lives with all these clips in the front of our hair. Listen, there was very, very little artistry in the 90s. You have to remember the transmission of knowledge is not what it is now. There was no YouTube. You were reliant on friend-to-friend -friend communication. Or maybe if you saw a look and got inspired by it, like I remember watching a Pulp Fiction with Uma Thurman and I saw she was wearing like a vamp nail polish and I wanted that nail polish. And that was actually a look I could get myself, but I didn't know any technique about putting nail polish. Like there was nothing I could watch to teach me how to do a good job doing nail polish on my own nails. We had to sort of learn the hard way, trial and error. That's a pretty good approximation of how I used to wear my own hair in high school in the 90s. No skin prep underneath foundation. We just went straight in with the foundation. I'm going to be using uh, one that I use a lot here on this channel, Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. My shade is 2C3 Fresco. And we always went for a very, very matte look. In my high school, we were very much on to MAC Cosmetics and we were very much ahead of the game, really. And I, you can rarely say this about Toronto because it's not on the leading edge really of anything, but MAC originated in Canada. And so there was a MAC counter, a MAC cosmetics counter at the de local department store. So all of us in our high school could get to this. You could walk to this department store within 15 minutes. You could go there. This is before the big makeup thing where everybody looked amazing. The MAC counter gals were actually really nice back then because I know they have a reputation now for sometimes being a little bit on the frosty side you know you ever walk into mac now and you just feel like they're so perfectly done you feel slightly judged i don't think they're trying to give you that vibe but you know you don't feel like it's the safest space for amateurs but back then everybody was an amateur like everybody sucked at doing makeup so we all had mac cosmetics and it was very very much on our radar and it was very easy for us to get and very approachable um, because, you know, if you wanted to go to like the Lancomes and like the Estee Lauder, that just felt like your mom's makeup. MAC did not. MAC felt really young and fresh. We all wore foundation that was either the face and body line, I'm trying to remember this correctly, or the, the Studio Fix. I think that those were the two main ones that we would wear. Oh my gosh, is this visible? This is my evil eye charm. I'm a little bit superstitious. You probably didn't know that about me. The way we would apply foundation back then was either these little white latex wedges, which you can still get and you still do see. I think Sephora still has these on display if you're trying to like try something out. That was how we put on our makeup. And when you went to MAC and you got a little sample, they would hand you a bunch of these little sponges so you could do it yourself at home and test it out. They would give you a little container, much as they do now. So the main look of the 90s, if you don't know, but I'm sure you can recall if you lived back then, was a very, very matte, very, very matte face. We did not have contour. We did not have highlight. That was out of the question. We did ha not have anything really except a really mattified light color. Unfortunately, the buy back then was going lighter <laughs> than like your chest or anything like that. Almost like a whitened face. There was no emphasis on cheekbones. There was no emphasis really on facial structure. The idea was to blank out everything. And the way we started to learn to blank out everything was from the makeup artist, Kevin O'Quan. And if you remember him, he was just considered an icon. He's the one who created the Kate Moss look that was so huge, like makeup wise. He's the one who really brought in the extremely thin eyebrows. And he was just the guy. Like he's the person who pretty much, Kevin O'Quan, to my mind, is pretty much the person who introduced us to the world of makeup because early 90s was not at all about makeup. If we wore eyeshadow and definitely not everybody did and certainly not to the extent that we do right now, it was almost always in a cool tone like a gray or a 
blue. Makeup brushes, also not really a thing, oddly enough. We never really used makeup brushes. We used the little sponge applicators, at least where I, you know, how I grew up. We used the little sponge applicators to put on our eyeshadow. I'm just going to use my finger because I don't have any little sponge applicators anymore. And we would highlight, if we were going to use anything light on our face, we would always use a sort of lighter color up here. So this part up here of your eye would be kind of a shimmery light color. And it was, again, not the best look, but kind of a vibe <laughs> looking back, right? The other thing we used was eyeliner. So, so far in my kit, I would have had MAC foundation. I might have had not like a palette of eyeshadows, but like one. And it would probably would have been blue or gray. I would have had eyeliner. At this point in the 90s, I had not quite transitioned to um, liquid eyeliner. But when I did start using liquid eyeliner, I used L'Oreal's um, liquid eyeliner that was actually just a little felt tip. But until then, I was just using pencil. And the thing that they used to tell you when you would do your eyeliner back then, poorly, I might add, the thing that they would tell you is that if you're doing your bottom lid, let me know if you remember this. Let me know if you remember this part. But if you're doing your bottom lid, they would say, only go to the middle of the eye down here. So let's try that out. I don't know. They just, the thinking was it just looked better if you only went halfway. You didn't go connect it there. It made your eyes look bigger. Notice I did not do my eyebrows. That was not a thing. Eyebrows were not a thing. You didn't buy eyebrow pencil, as I recall. You certainly did not fill them in because you wanted the thinnest look possible. And you just plucked the hell out of them, basically. That's what you did. You just plucked them really thin and you didn't use any makeup on them. I've just darkened mine a tiny bit for funsies, but what I remember is that we had a really rounded shape. So if you look back at the sort of the Kate Moss, the icons of the time, uh, celebrity-wise, Drew Barrymore had a really 90s look. I really associate her with the 90s. Uma Thurman, to me, um, not in her personal life, but uh, as the character that she played in Pulp Fiction was a huge icon for 90s makeup. Winona Ryder, not so much. She had a really natural look, but for me, she was always a touch point because she had dark hair and the lighter skin, as I do, because the 90s was also all about blondes. This is the Pamela Anderson era. This is the Drew Barrymore with her blonde, blonde hair. You know, Kate Moss was a light-haired person as well. Two things were like a no-no in the 90s. One of them was blush. We did not wear blush, and we certainly did not wear false eyelashes. False eyelashes were considered completely for the 1960s. People would have laughed at you back then if you were like false eyelashes. They would have just looked way, way, way too much. And I would argue that they do sometimes today look way, way too much. I don't know. The actual struggle in the 90s was to get your face matte enough because I was an oily teenager. Most of us were oily teenagers. You know, we always had shine coming through. Shine was the enemy. So we had shine papers. And I think Clean and Clear were the only people that made those like shine absorbing papers back then. And we all carried pressed powder. We had a pressed powder compact, typically from CoverGirl. And if you'll notice so far, these are all things that are still carried. Like Mac still makes that face and body uh, and studio fix foundation. You can still get those and you can definitely still get CoverGirl's pressed powder. We always, always had that with us because we needed to reapply our lipstick because actually foundation was not something you would reapply necessarily during the day. We certainly didn't really have that on our radar, but we did have to reapply our lipstick a lot in high school. And there was no way to do that really, unless you, you know, you didn't have a phone where you could flip it around and put it on selfie mode to do your lipstick, you needed to carry a compact with you. So that's what we did. We all had compacts with us and we'd reapply our lipstick. And lipstick was really, to my mind, what 90s makeup's all about. If you want to talk to me about 90s makeup, for me, it instantly evokes the different lipsticks and lip liners that we used to wear. You know, that simple 90s eyeliner is not that bad. Like maybe there is something too only going halfway. I actually do think it looks pretty good. So let's talk now about... The most important part of 90s makeup, to my mind, which is lipstick. The brands that we would buy, and everybody had these. I think we had MAC, and not necessarily everybody was wearing MAC at the sort of early, mid-90s point. Because, again, it was a Canadian Toronto thing, and we all had easy access. I was a city girly. We used to, like, walk over the makeup counter at our lunch break. No big deal. And we weren't that into makeup, but, you know, it was something to do. When you're in high school, you're always looking for something to do on your own steam. The other thing that we all had... Uh, was lipstick. The most common lipstick, and it's again still being made, so there's maybe something to these 90s hits. Uh, Revlon, Toast of New York was the big deal. Toast of New York was a sort of brown with a little bit of red tones in it. That was the iconic 90s lipstick that all of us had because it was affordable. Now, if you were kind of a little bit more into makeup, you would purchase MAC lipstick, and I think Spice was the big deal back then. Um, and I think it was paired with maybe 
twig lipstick. I might even have those around. I just remember Spice and Twig. And I can't remember which is the lipstick and which is the lip liner. But again, brown. So brown was the vibe. I don't have any brown lipstick except for this one by Cora's, which is not made anymore. But it does give a nice sort of updated brown. So let's have a look at that. The lip liner was very matte. The lipstick itself was also quite matte. The Revlon one was a little bit more hydrating. So the other colors I remember from back then were wine with everything. And some um, girls in my high school did still wear a red lip. You know, your Revlon Fire and Ice color and Max Ruby Woo. I can't remember if that was out, but I remember that. That really matte MAC lipstick was also a vibe. But if you were a red lipstick girly, you were a red lipstick girly. You didn't veer into the brows. And if you were into the brows, you did not veer into the reds. It's the hair that really evokes the 90s <laughs> for me. Very, very simple amount of things in our makeup bag that we would take to school with us every day. Foundation, you know, might be in there. You might leave that at home, more likely, to be honest. You might have a pressed powder. You would have a lip liner. You would have a lipstick. You would have an eyeliner. And that was kind of it. We didn't have all these other things, and we didn't feel we needed them. Some mascara, in which case CoverGirl was like the only name in the game. Like if you're going to have one mascara, it would be CoverGirl. And we didn't have so much high-end luxury stuff. Like MAC was the sort of more elevated it got. And maybe if you had like somebody in your life who loved the expensive counters, they might take you there and introduce you to like your Lancomes and Estee Lauders, as I mentioned. But in general, no. Like in general, MAC was the most expensive it got. It was such a different atmosphere to what it is now. And I kind of miss it, you know, I kind of miss the simplicity of just nobody really was that good at doing our foundation. We always ended it like here. And so this was always a total different color. So, you know, and, you know, on the whole, I don't think it looks that bad. I think it, there's something to it. There's a real kind of naturalism to 90s makeup that I think is a bit missing. Everything is so snatched, so uplifted, so contoured, highlighted, blushed. It's kind of nice to go back to the simple way of doing makeup. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you watch my next video. I will link one up here. Go ahead and watch that next. We'll see you soon.